Welcome to our webinar lesson. Um, today we're going to be looking at natural hazards and in particular we're going to focus on our plate boundaries. Um, so there are four key plate boundaries we'll look at today. So our three key takeaway points are to describe the characteristics for each boundary, um, to explain why they are happening, and to try and link some of the hazards towards each of those boundaries. So to start off with, you'll need a pen paper just to make some notes as we go through. And we'll start with what causes these tectonic plates to move around. So first of all, our outer layer of the earth is known as the crust, okay? And that's the solid layer that we have right on the outside. Um, now this outer layer is basically the cooled rock from what would be inside the earth or the mantle. Okay, um, so we'll just add a quick layer. So this is called the crust. Okay, now the crust is made up of what we call the lithosphere and the upper mantle, which are basically the solid components, um, solid components of our uh, So we'll keep that idea in the back of our mind, okay? So the lithosphere is kind of made up of the crust and the upper mantle, okay? So then we have our other layers. So we have our mantle, which is liquid rock. And we have our outer core, which is almost liquid rock to some extent. And we have our inner core. So we won't look at the layers in particular today, um, but the core is the Earth's source of heat. Okay, so the inner core is the hottest layer, usually about somewhere about 5000 degrees C. So a really, really hot layer. And I'll just move this over and make sure it's a little bit smaller. So the Earth's core is where all the heat comes from. Now our mantle is our liquid layer, okay? Where it's kind of made up of molten rock or what we call magma that moves around. So these are our different layers and there'll be some points within our core that are in particular quite hot. So say for example, this point here, it's a source where it's really, really hot. I'll do that in red actually, okay? So this point is really, really hot, okay? Now, hot things, when their heat is transferred to them, they expand apart, like you can see in this diagram here. Hot things expand apart, okay? So what they are doing, as they're expanding apart, they become lighter. And what they will do is they will rise up. So any particles that are warmed up will move upwards in an upwards direction, okay? So keep that idea in mind. So they are less dense, they are lighter, so they rise up, okay? So from that heat source that's circled, liquid magma, the mantle is heated. So it expands becoming less dense so it rises so this is quite important this will basically um, create movement inside the mantle where we'll find our magma rising upwards okay now in theory it can't go through the crust so what you might notice is in some parts it will, but a majority of this 
won't make it through, but instead what it does is it transfers its energy to the crust, but it spreads out. You can see those blue hours trusts next to it. So we'll add another box. So as a magma meets the crust, it spreads out, dragging the crust in different directions. Okay, so, so far that's another key point. So it drags it in different directions. And as it's dragging this crust apart, it's using all of its energy. So it's gradually, it's losing energy. So where it was expanding with all of that energy, it's now beginning to lose its energy. So it begins to sink back down. And that's why we can see this motion right here and right here, okay? So it sinks back down when it becomes more, loses its energy, becoming more dense, and it will basically return back to be reheated. So as the magma loses energy, it contracts together, becoming more dense and sinking back down into the lower mantle to be reheated. So that's an important component within this, okay? It's sinking back down to be reheated. Now the whole cycle basically makes a loop. And this process, I'll put this in full. So this loop is called a convection current. And that's what we're looking at right here, this convection cell. That is our convection current, and that's what drives the plates, our tectonic plates, our land masses in loads of different directions, which will result in our key boundaries. So a couple of key things just to highlight here. Um, I'll do it in purple. So the process is through convection, convection currents. There's magma that's heated, so it's less dense, rises. Um, it drags the crust, should be a G at the end of there, in different directions. When it becomes more dense, it sinks back down to be reheated. So those parts, those processes are really quite key, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to what actually happens at these different boundaries. And I'll just add one more arrow. So this would be the equivalent with anything in our more dense air, which is heavier, would have a sinking motion, whereas the others would rise, cool air, more air particles in a certain space, or more magma particles that have contracted together will be heavier and they'll sink down. So let's look at what boundaries we expect to find. So, first of all, we are looking at constructive margins. Okay, whoops. Now here, we can see that the plates are being pulled in opposite directions. Okay, they're pulled away from each other. So what this will lead to is magma having a gap to rise through. So here, magma will rise up through this gap and it will cool either side. So all along this ridge, this raised ridge, which is a ridge made up of cooled magma, you will find little spots 
of little volcanoes all the way along. Okay, now some of these will be submarine volcanoes, like we can see here, which is underwater. Okay, from rapidly cooling magma. And because it rapidly cools, it creates this ridge. It doesn't travel very far. So hot magma, really freezing cold water, they'll cool and solidify really quick, which means that it always stays around uh, the main part of this boundary. It doesn't really go traveling beyond this ridge. Okay, so we get sub submarine volcanoes. At occasional points, you might find that the magma rises above the water level and it can create an island, okay? Um, Iceland would be uh, an example of it, or Surtsey, which we can see in this little diagram across here. So you can see this light ridge from this satellite image. Now that is basically a representation of a mid-ocean ridge, okay? And this shows us that magma is being created at this point. So we call this a mid-ocean ridge, okay? And it shows that new land is being made. So in theory, our Atlantic Ocean will be moving in two different directions. I'll do it in yellow. One is going this way and one is going this way. So we're moving away from North America and North America is moving away from us. And each time, just we can see along there, uh, the diagram, we can see that there will be loads of volcanic activity, that's Iceland, but loads of mini underwater volcanoes all the way along this ridge. So it's literally an underwater mountain range. That's the equivalent of it. So new land is being made as these two plates tear apart, allowing magma to rise and cool. So as two plates move apart, magma rises and cools rapidly to create new land. Therefore, we call it constructing new land, constructive boundary because it's making new land. So constructive. Okay, so this is gonna be one of our first boundaries. Okay, new land's being made. Now the earth can't get bigger, so this process stops, okay? It's not always expanding, so this process will continue, but elsewhere, something has to happen to counteract it. So this takes us to our opposing force, which is our destructive margins, okay? Now here, what we have is we've got two plates moving together. One plate is heavier, thinner but heavier, and it sinks underneath the other, that clear arrow going there. And one plate is basically moving into the other, or remaining stationary at least, okay? So at this boundary, you basically got collision, one from here and one from here, two plates pushing together. Now, because these crusts are huge and thick, they basically gonna, they're gonna create a lot of friction. So you will see at this point here, there is a focus, a tremor, seismic waves being released, okay? And this, can also, if it happens above water, can trigger another form of hazard, okay? So, just to add in a few parts. So on one side, we've got our heavy or more dense, what we call oceanic crust. This is subducting, which is another word for sinking underneath, as it is heavier or more dense. Let's use the word more dense. Okay. So we're just going to uh, move this a little bit further away to one side. Okay. So it's moving because it's more dense. 
Now, as it sinks under, it goes into the hot magma or the hot mantle. And at this point, you can see it vanishes. Okay, so here is actually transformed back into less dense magma, which will rise up into a volcano's magma chamber, okay, and lead to an eruption. So upon here, we can add in just underneath. As the plate subducts, it melts back into magma. rising into a volcano's magma chamber. Okay, so we know that we're going to have um, volcanoes there because magma is being created, tend to be more explosive composite volcanoes. Um, we'll probably also um, notice that there's going to be earthquakes because of the tremors as these huge chunks of rock grind past each other building up huge amount of uh, tension, okay? Now, as these seismic waves are released, if they happen above oceanic crust, which tends to have ocean above it, they can also be released and trigger a tsunami, okay? So the seismic waves that are released from the um, tension as the crust grinds past each other. So the seismic waves that are released from the tension as the crust grinds each, uh, grinds past each other, and you have to imagine the quantity of rock about 10 kilometers thick, um, if not more, um, can trigger a tsunami at these boundaries. Okay, so these boundaries tend to have high, um, high energy, high impact, high magnitude hazards. Okay, so what we might see on our diagram, we might see volcanoes forming in Japan. Japan is basically a whole volcanic island. This is where the oceanic crust over here, the Pacific Ocean is subducting underneath and melting along this chain of islands, okay? Um, we would see that there'll be, um, I'll do this in yellow, um, earthquake focuses all along the bottom there. So this is where, as the rocks grinding past each other, we can have tsunamis being created. And the tsunamis, you'll find the waves will be able to travel in all directions. Okay, as long as there's water, same across here, all directions. So that's why Japan is massively at risk. Okay, so we'll just add this final note in. Destructive um, boundaries tend to be most dangerous. They have earthquakes as plates move, collide into each other, which can trigger tsunamis um, if focus, which is the point where the earthquake starts. So if the focus is directly below the ocean. And then as the subducting crust is destroyed, can trigger a volcanic eruption. Okay, so where land is made at a constructive boundary, here it's going to be destroyed. Okay, so that's why the earth doesn't get bigger. It's just transformed at these different parts. And it's also the key point here. 
we'll get this highlighted. So key thing is that the oceanic plate subducts and then it melts into magma, okay, creating volcanoes. As plates have released their tension, they can trigger tsunamis. So this is a couple of key points along there, okay? So what we'll do, we'll go on to our next boundary. So the last two are relatively straightforward. So this can be plate boundaries either moving in the same direction or in opposing directions, but they tend to be at different speeds. So at this, um, at what we call conservative boundaries, plates slide past each other. Okay, so nothing's being destroyed, nothing's being made. Okay, if they slide past each other, either in different directions or at different speeds. So because they're grinding past each other, tension builds up as plates grind past each other. So therefore, if we're looking at the impact at this margin, conservative margin, you only have the rocks grinding past each other. So only earthquakes are found here. Okay, so only earthquakes are going to be found here. So that's quite important. Okay, but a very simplistic boundary. So all that can happen is that earthquakes will occur. And the west coast of America, they have the San Andreas fault line, which stretches it will probably be a little bit difficult to show, but stretches across here. Okay, and these are plates moving at different speeds. So I believe they are in the same direction, but at different speeds. One's faster than the other. Okay, so only earthquakes will happen here, but they tend to be quite destructive earthquakes. So if we look at where they would happen, they would happen all along this margin as it grinds past. So the same would happen here. You get a series of volcanoes, uh, sorry, earthquakes occurring all along this um, boundary. But nothing's being destroyed, no magma is allowed up, no magma is created. So we'll go on to our final boundary. So this one is what we call a collision margin, okay? And we can see the hazard already that it contributes to. So at a collision margin, two plates are moving into each other. They're colliding, but they tend to be two continents colliding together. So at this boundary, two continental Collide into each other. Now they're both the same density. It's not that one is heavier, like the oceanic meeting the land mass, meeting the continental plate. Um, here, they're both the same density, so neither really gives way. So they both plates are the same density. So neither gives way. This leads to fold mountains being created as land buckles under pressure. Now you can see where uh, this has happened. So with India, it was its own separate landmass a while, uh, a long time ago, but it's gradually been moving 
into the Eurasian plate and all along here we can see that the land has buckled it's kind of strained all across there and it's literally the land has folded between um, between both of these huge plates moving into each other so all the way along here we have got the Himalayas which are an example of a bold um, mountain range okay now same again um, no magma is allowed up no magma is being created but the two land masses the pressure that they uh, are forcing upon one another creates earthquakes so here the tension builds up to release as earthquakes and they can be very devastating especially in places like Nepal okay so this is what we call a collision margin two plates colliding together so just to um, round up our four boundaries we'll just recap our giveaway uh, takeaway points right at the end so we wanted to start by uh, describing the characteristics of each boundary. So constructive, plates move apart, new land is made. Destructive, two plates move together and one subducts, it sinks underneath, it is destroyed. Collision, two land masses collide together. And conservative boundary, two plates slide parallel to each other. So either same or opposite directions or at different speeds, but they're going sliding past each other. So why it does this motion all happen? It's because it's driven by convection currents. So these are the currents that will, um, as the hot magma rises, it will drag these plates apart. And as it loses energy, it will sink back down to be reheated by the inner core. So convection currents drive these patterns of plate movement. And then finally, what hazards do we expect to find at each boundary? At a conservative boundary where they're sliding past, it's only really going to be earthquakes. At a constructive margin where the plates are being pulled apart, yeah, there might be minor earthquakes as the plates move, but mainly we're looking at volcanoes and they tend to be more gentle shield volcanoes usually with that margin. A destructive boundaries will have volcanoes, powerful ones, composite, um, earthquakes, powerful ones, and tsunamis. Then so again, all powerful uh, hazards at the destructive margin. And then collision, we'd expect to find mainly earthquakes. So hopefully that's given you something to take away from the lesson. Uh, thank you very much for joining um, and we'll see you soon.